I'm Alex Lyon, and you're about to start a seven-part mini course in concise, clear, and confident communication. I put this course together because I believe that it's really the best first step for you in your professional development and laying that foundation to develop strong communication skills moving forward. I encourage you to watch all seven lessons. There's a little practice involved in each one, so you can actually hear and then try the ideas out. So let's jump right into the first lesson. In lesson one, we're going after long-windedness. I encourage you to watch this and go through it as many times as you need to to make this material a habit. Tip one, long-windedness is a key enemy of good communication. I'm always surprised that really talkative people assume that they're good communicators, but more talking does not equal good communication. In fact, a lot of times if these words, Gabby, Chatty, Verbose, and Talkative, accurately describe you, it's probably forming a bad impression, especially in professional settings. Allison Green said it like this, you might think, well, some people are long-winded, but it doesn't mean he wouldn't do a good job. The problem is that at minimum, it signals that you're not good at picking up on conversational cues, and it raises doubts about your ability to organize your thoughts and convey needed information quickly. So strategy one, resolve why you sometimes talk too much. When do you find yourself multiplying words, being overly talkative? Is it just at work or is it in social situations? And what are your in the moment thought processes that trigger it? Are you insecure about something? What's going on in your mind that's driving that over talkative habit? Because all the tips in the world will not undo an unspoken belief that drives that long windedness. So excessive talkativeness is rooted in our unspoken beliefs. Let's say you're a physician and you're thinking to yourself, maybe you don't even realize it, but you're thinking, I want people to know I'm smart. You will most certainly talk too much to prove that. And because we live in a polite society, people just play along, but inside they're having an entirely different thought process about this conversation. They will almost never tell you directly that you're long-winded. However, they will form unfavorable impressions of you anyway. And so it's very important to realize the impact that long-winded communication can have on your professional relationships and the people around you. So people long-winded for various reasons. What's your reason? Maybe there's more than one. Is it insecurity? Maybe some self-centeredness? Do you want to show everything you know, like you're that physician? Do you like the airtime and the attention? In other words, does it feel good when people are listening to you and you love when everyone's watching you in action? Do you mistake talking for adding value? Do you mistake more talking for good communication? Are there some control issues going on in your heart, in your mind? In other words, do you like to steer a conversation and be the one talking so you dictate the pace and the flow of things? Any one of these reasons, and there are many others, could be driving that long-windedness. So it's really important that you take some time and get to the bottom of it. Strategy two is to gauge your long-windedness. Rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. If you're really concise, give yourself a one. If you're somewhere in the middle, depending on situation, five. If you're really long-winded, a 10. And of course, you can give yourself other scores, but I would recommend setting a goal to move at least below a five. Let's say you wanna be from a one to four range, depending upon the situation. Concise strategy number three is to commit to conciseness. As FDR said, be sincere, be brief, and be seated. Now he's talking about presentations, it sounds like, but I think this demonstrates his commitment to conciseness because conciseness really sets the stage for that clarity and that confidence that we're all after. And so commitment in this sense means practicing the tips in this video and in the next six lessons. And while you're doing it, remember why you wanna be concise, clear, and confident. Here are some reasons. People will pay attention to what you say when you communicate this way. People remember what you say. You'll have more impact and you can lead more effectively. So there are lots of good reasons to do so. So long-windedness is a key enemy to good communication. Some takeaway strategies, resolve why you sometimes talk too much, and then gauge your long-windedness to help you set that goal, and then commit to practicing the tips in this lesson and then the remaining six lessons. So your first step is 
get to the bottom of your unspoken reasons for long-windedness. That will really catapult you through this course and help you apply these tips with much more effectiveness. Looking forward, we'll work on how to form a concise overall message, concise sentences. We'll work on organizing your thoughts, effective pauses, avoiding fillers, and confident non-verbals. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, Communication Coach, I encourage you to do so, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.